Hey y'all, Culture in the Fight here, talking about the sacred calendar. And in today's class, we're going to give a lot more detail on how that calendar actually works. What we're going to do is we're going to step through the book of the revolution of the luminaries of heaven, looking at the intricate details of each verse. And I'm going to try to show you a pictorial diagram that expresses what those verses are actually saying. Now, like I said, this is coming out of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. This is a sub book in the book of Enoch, starting in about chapter 71, where Enoch explains the luminaries and their relationship to the sacred calendar. As we read over in Genesis chapter one and verse 14, the sun, the moon and the stars are supposed to represent the days the months and the seasons. And so that's what we'll be talking about in this video, how those actually play out. Now, when we're looking at verse two out of chapter 71, it talks about the first law of the luminaries. And it says that the first law of the luminaries is that the sun and its light arrive at the Western gates of heaven. Now, this is one of the verses that proves that the day ends with sunset. A new day starts at sunset. That's actually the first law of the luminaries. Now down in verse three, he starts talking about these gates. And this is extremely important to understand the six gates that the sun and the moon go through. This picture that I'm showing you here shows the sun, which is the yellow dot in the third gate and the moon, which is the gray dot in the fourth gate. There are six gates. And both the sun and the moon travel through these gates throughout the year. Of course, the sun makes its revolution in 364 days, but the moon actually travels through these same gates in about 28.5 days. Now, this book of the luminaries gives a lot of details about the stars, the moon, and particularly the sun. Um, and you can read about those if you want to. We're focusing primarily on the timing of the calendar and not so much the details of the luminaries. So we're going to skip down to verse eight, which is talking about how after the sun sets in the west, it travels through the north before it rises again in the eastern sky. Well, I put this picture up so you can get an idea of what he's talking about when it says that it travels through the north. If I rotate this image a little bit, you'll see us here in the south and you see the sun rises in the east, sets in the west and then travels back through the north. Now, also, we can see that the moon is in the same path as the sun. According to this image here in this particular time, you actually have the moon and the sun in the same gate. Now, this is actually part one of a series. This video is talking particularly about the sun. And in the next videos, we'll go into more detail about the moon. But for now, let's jump down to verse nine, where it's talking about the first month. You see in verse 11 that it's talking about both the sun and the moon when it's talking about the month. Well, this is important to understand because we get a new month when both the sun and the moon converge in the same gate. For instance, what you see here now is the sun is in the fourth gate and you see that the moon is also in the fourth gate is when both the sun and the moon are in the same gate that we'll have a new moon. That would actually be the beginning of the new month. Now it's surprising how similar this time piece is to a clock where you have the sun, which represents the hour hand and the moon, which represents the minute hand. But we'll come back to that later. These particular verses are talking about the first month is when the moon and the sun converge in the fourth gate. Now, that's important to understand this fourth gate, because we would want to think that the first month would begin in the first gate. And that's the way the pagan calendar works. That's why their calendar starts in January in the first gate. But the way our father's calendar works is the first month starts in springtime. And so that's down here in the fourth gate. But we'll cover the seasons a little bit more 
in detail in one of the later videos of this series. This first part is paying particularly close attention to the motion of the sun and that brings us to what they call the alanema, which is the pattern that the sun makes if you were to plot its position at the same time every day throughout the year. So what you're looking at here is the sun traveling through these gates as the earth revolves around it throughout the year. We learned in the previous slide that the first month begins in the fourth gate, but notice that the sun travels through the fourth, then to the fifth, then to the sixth, but it actually stays in the sixth gate for two months before it heads back to the fifth, then the fourth. Then we'll have another equinox before we enter the seventh month there in the third gate, but we'll get into more detail about that. I just wanted to show you the Ala Emma so that you could get an understanding of how the sun travels through these gates. This is where the stars come into play. It's the sun's position in relationship to the stars that makes up the so-called gates or portals that we read about in the book of Enoch. But anyway, let's go on. Down in verse 13, where it's talking about the actions of the sun in this particular gate, you notice here that it's talking about the day length compared to the length of the night. And you see here, as you enter the fourth gate, which is on or about March the 20th, that there is about 12 hours of daylight as well as 12 hours of nighttime. But you see over the course of the year, especially around June, we have a lot more daylight hours than we have nighttime hours. And in about December, we have more nighttime hours than we have daytime hours. Well, we see when the sun enters this fourth gate that the days are starting to get longer, which is opposite than we read in the fall equinox where the nights are getting longer than the days. And notice also that it's talking about the 30 days here. This is important to understand because this is the length that the sun stays in the fourth gate. During this particular month, it stays in the fourth gate for 30 days. But now let's go on to verse 14, which is talking about the length of days during the time in which the sun is in this fourth gate. Notice here that it says that the day is 18 parts in total. And during the first month where it started off and the hours of nighttime and the hours of daytime were the same. By the time the sun leaves the fourth gate and enters the fifth gate, it says that there will be 10 parts to the day and eight parts to the night, which equates to about 12 hours and 40 minutes of daylight and 11 hours and 20 minutes of nighttime. Well, you can use this table to see the number of hours of daylight throughout the year. You see in about January or when the sun is in the first gate that there is about 10 hours of daylight, but it's about 14 hours of nighttime. And that's just based on sunrise and sunset time. It doesn't take into account the twilight hours or the dusk and or dawn hours. Then it brings us to verse 15, which is talking about the fifth gate. After those 30 days are up, the sun will transition out of the fourth gate and enter into the fifth gate, where it stays in that gate for 30 mornings. And then it'll go to the sixth gate. Now looking down at verse 16, Again, talking about the length of the day. Now we're about to go to 11 parts of daylight and seven parts of nighttime. The day is still getting longer and you can see it plotted on this sundial layout here, where right here at this blue line, which represents the equinox, the sun goes down at about 7 p.m. Whereas in the first gate, it goes down at about 5 p.m. And in the sixth gate, it goes down at about 9 p.m., ignoring daylight savings time altogether. You see how you can actually plot out the day length versus the gates or the season that we're in. 
And we see in verse 17 that it stays in that particular gate for 31 mornings. So notice the pattern here. It stayed in the fourth gate for 30 mornings, in the fifth gate for 30 mornings. Now it's in the sixth gate and it's going to stay there for 31 mornings, making a total of 91 days in that particular season. And you see down in verse 19 that it is about this time that the days start to become shorter and the nights start to become longer. It's because the summer solstice actually occurs in this particular portal. And of course, the summer solstice is when the days stop getting longer and start getting shorter once again. Now, these verses here, 20 through about verse 40, are telling us about the times and the events when the sun traveled through each one of these portals. Here in verse 20 and 21, we see that we're entering for the second time in the sixth gate. Like we talked about before, the way it works is four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one, one, then two, three is the way the sun travels through the gates each year. Now, whereas the first time we entered the sixth gate, we stayed there for 31 mornings. The second time is actually 30 mornings, again, giving us this 30, 30, 31 day pattern. So here that we're entering the sixth portal for the second time is when we've actually transitioned from springtime into summertime. The sacred first day of summer is the first new moon that occurs after June the 19th. And that is also a day of remembrance, but we'll be talking about that a little bit later too. Let's look down in verse 22, where we see the sun is now traveling from the sixth gate back to the fifth gate. And you can see how this works based on this alanema. You have the spring equinox here, and the sun kind of travels in this oddly shaped infinity symbol throughout the year. Well, you come in here into the fifth, then the sixth gate. Then it travels around to the sixth gate before it enters back into the fifth gate. And notice again how Enoch is telling us the days in which it stays in that gate is 30 days. And it tells us the length of the daylight compared to the nighttime hours. Then in verse 24 and 25, we hear about this fall equinox which is the second time of the year in which the days and the nights are equal. This is where the sun is going from the fifth gate back to the fourth gate. But this time notice that it's 31 days. So you have 30 days in the sixth gate, 30 days in the fifth gate, and now 31 days in the fourth gate. And of course, that 31st day is the day of remembrance, which will occur on the new moon that falls after the fall equinox. Now, like I said, this book gives us the details for each one of these solar months. You see the third gate, then the sun enters into the second gate, which is about October or November, before it goes into the first gate, continuing this 30, 30, 31 day pattern, spinning two times in the first gate like it did in the sixth gate, then it goes to the second gate and then the third gate again on this 30, 30, 31 day pattern. Each of those seasons, which are 91 days, are what make up the 364 day year. It's the time in which the sun crosses this vernal equinox that makes up the 364th day. The next day after the sun crosses the vernal equinox, would actually be the first day of the solar year. Now, like I said earlier, we're gonna be doing more classes as we talk about the moon here. And that's why I'm trying to avoid the word month because in order for you to have a month, you have to have the convergence of both the sun and the moon. So whereas the solar year is starting at the vernal equinox, the sacred year won't start until you have a new moon after that vernal equinox. And this is also how we know which equinox is actually the head of the year because it's telling us that the head of the year 
will be at the equinox in which the days are getting longer than the nights. It is the sun's position in an analemma that determines the length of the day. And it is this 364th day that actually calibrates the calendar every year. If we were only looking at the solar year, we would actually lose about 11 minutes every year. And over time, the seasons will become dislodged. But because we're looking at the vernal equinox as the end of the year and the day after the vernal equinox as always the first day of the solar year, this is how our father keeps his calendar in sync. It'll never travel or get dislodged because it's reset by the equinox every single year. So there you have it, the solar portion of the sacred calendar. And everything that we talked about kind of looks like this, where you have the six gates that represents the stars or the sun's position in the stars. And you have the analemma, which represents the sun traveling through these six gates, which determines the length of the day because of its relationship to the Earth's position around the sun. And this is the compressed version of the same layout. You still see that there's a four hour difference between the daylight hours in the summertime compared to the wintertime. But you also see the four seasons represented here. Of course, the first season starts over here at about March the 20th. Then the second season is 91 days later and about June the 19th. And you have to remember, these are solar seasons. You still have to wait on the moon in order to know the day of remembrance and the official beginning of these seasons. Like, for instance, at day 182, which is about September the 18th, is not the official start of fall. If you want to know when fall starts, you have to look at the first new moon that falls after September the 18th. Just like you do in the wintertime, you look at the first new moon after December the 18th to know the official start of wintertime. But we'll cover more on that in subsequent videos. This one, we just wanted to talk primarily about chapter 71, which is almost entirely about the position of the sun. Chapter 72 is when we get into the position of the moon. And about chapter 73 or 74 is when we get into these days of remembrance, these quarter days. So I just wanted to share this with you. We'll be putting out more information, Lord willing, on the calendar. Maybe one like this that we could print out. And if we're able to create that, hopefully you'll know how it works. So if you got any questions about any of this, please put them down in the comment section below. If you got any comments, put those down there too. Go ahead and hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and pray for us.